The iPhone SE from last year is absolutely the best value phone ever made. And after the past year of use, I've only gotten more and more convinced of its value. So, uh, why is that? Let's find out. It's not broken. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. This phone is without a doubt one of the headlining features in all of Apple's products for me. It's got power for days, it's just about the perfect size, has Touch ID, and can be had for very, very reasonable prices. I've had this phone for over a year, and in that year, while other budget or wallet-friendly options have come out, Nothing's really challenged the SE for the dominant spot. While no major features or earth-shattering upgrades have happened since its release that wouldn't be attributed to every single other iPhone, I do want to refine my thoughts and opinions of what I've liked and disliked over that last orbit around the sun. It has been a while since we've talked about the iPhone SE, so first up, let's talk price. This can be had at a base cost of $399. I just... I just love saying that. It almost seems like $399 could be considered a rounding error for some of those other high-end flagship type phones. So you get all of this. Okay, Gary, you promised that you wouldn't spend the whole video saying, you get all this for that crazy price. I'll try not to say it, but in your head, if you hear me say something about the features or power and then pause, just imagine me saying, you get all this for all of that crazy price, woo! You have to have the woo in there. The base model comes with 64 gigabytes of storage, a couple of different color options, and the now slightly older, but still very relevant A13 processor. You can spec this all the way up to 256 gigabytes of storage for $549, which is still less money than most of the other iPhone's base models. Okay, I, I'm fibbing a little bit. I'm gonna say it one more time, just how much of a shockingly good value this phone is. Even with 256 gigabytes of storage, which frankly is more than I have ever even come close to using on my larger, more expensive phones, this thing still costs less than the lowest end, like 64 gigabyte versions of some of those much more expensive phones. And honestly, that's been my favorite part of this phone over the last year. Oh, and yeah, we moved on to the next section of the video where I talk about what I like and what I don't like. It was so seamless, you didn't even notice. <laughs> Segway Ninja, that's my new title, not the everyday dad. The Segway Ninja. <laughs> the best part about this phone is the value. And that will absolutely tie in to each of the other things I've liked. Because value is the cornerstone brick of the Apple SE line in general. But definitely when we specifically talk about this iPhone model. I've also really continued to like Touch ID. This is the superior way to unlock your phone if you've got to wear a mask for the majority of the day. If I'm in an office, Mandate says that I have a mask on. And while yes... Apple very recently opened up firmware to let your watch unlock the phone, and that is, in all fairness, that is an awesome and snazzy way to get around the Face ID limitations, but it has that one major problem. You've got to have an Apple Watch to make it work. I do own an Apple Watch and think they are value added. Not everybody else does, though. And you can get around all of that hassle on the SE because all you got to do just tap the home button and then the phone's unlocked. Touch ID fam, it's so good. I do really wish that going forward with all the iPhones that we could get something like the iPad Air's Touch ID button built into the top. It might be tougher to do because all of these buttons are far smaller than the buttons on the iPad, but I love Touch ID, especially for phones where there is a real chance that I will have to wear a mask when I need to unlock it. Touch ID on everything. Everything! Let's put Touch ID everywhere. We've even got keyboards that are gonna have Touch ID now. I might get that tattooed on me to show how serious I am. Okay, I'm definitely not that serious. Clarification, I will not be getting that tattooed on me. Definitely was a bluff that I couldn't even hold for what, like three seconds? The next thing that I've really liked is the size. I'm a pretty big fan of the iPhone 12 mini. I do remember when phones were super small getting smaller before this new age of phones being big and getting bigger. While I do use the 12 Pro Max as my phone now, that's because I need the battery life more than I need the size benefits. And I do kind of miss the size benefits on smaller phones like this. The SE 2020 is just about the perfect size for a cell phone. It fits very well in the hand. It's very comfortable to use both when texting, typing, when you're browsing the internet or consuming content, or even using it to make phone calls. Almost like the name implies. Phones, am I right? 
Who would have thought you would use it to make phone calls? I say this a lot in cell phone videos, but I personally define how much I like a cell phone size by if I like running with it. The 12 Pro Max, way too big to comfortably take with me on my runs. You've either got to like super extend your hands to hold it, and that's very uncomfortable, or you've got to do this weird like half carry thing. And when you do this, you end up activating the screen all the time and I'll end up turning off my music or skipping songs or unlocking the phone or closing, opening up apps I don't want to. That's a huge pain in the neck. I really like the SE 2020 more to run with than the iPhone 12 mini because the rounded shape of the body is far more comfortable to hold during my six days a week of running. Plus again, if I do need to make changes, unlocking with Touch ID, look at this. Ooh, it unlocked before I could even show you. Check this out. Boom. So much easier when running. I've also recently updated this to the latest version of iOS, which sure that OS is great, but it shows another awesome thing that Apple does here. All Apple phones will get updates as long as the processor, storage, and active memory can handle it. One year later, and this phone isn't even sweating yet, the A13 processor inside of here should be getting updates for years to come. Now here's something funny. Here's something funny. I say this pretty often in videos. I typed years in caps in the script because that's what I normally do for emphasis. But what's funny is when I type that in the script, I went back and I changed it to just normal font because that's not something that needs to be emphasized here. If you buy an Apple product, it will be supported for much longer than other devices. Other devices sell their products with a feature, like a headlining feature that this phone or this tablet will get two years of updates and support. That's not notable here because it just happens. Not only will the SE2020 get those updates, but this phone completely interoperates with that magical ecosystem we and I talk so much about. All the benefits and things that can drive Apple haters nuts can be found right here in the palm of my hand. iMessage, AirDrop, Touch ID, copy and paste between Apple devices, check an email on the phone, accept the meeting invite, and it will populate on the calendar if you run on your Mac if you have one. So good. All you need is this, the cheapest of phones, and you get everything that makes the Apple ecosystem so special. Talking about the processor again, I still have liked the power of this phone. I haven't been using this much to do 4K video editing much recently, but we did have a video proving that this very small, very budget cell phone can easily handle video editing codecs that bring legit computers to their knees. It's just, it's remarkable what kind of power Apple can fit into their homemade chips. And I, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, who cares? It's a cell phone, why do I care about video editing? Well, I say video editing here because for almost any other function, you wouldn't really be able to tell a difference because this will run all of the apps that you're probably gonna run. And even most, if not all of the games inside the Apple Arcade or the Apple App Store. Talking about cell phone power is kind of weird to me because you won't really see it too much on a day-to-day -day basis. It will show itself here in some camera and image processing software and techniques that the SE can't do as opposed to the newer phones. But everything else is super snappy, it's responsive. You will not lack for power if you buy this. Speaking of the camera, well, I've not been blown away by the option here. It is running an older sensor in a less impressive lens array. It's not terrible. It's got impressive stabilization, so if you want to take longer shutter low light pictures, you can get it. Plus for video, if you want to use this as a travel camera or even a vlogging type camera, you get good stabilization and you can do up to 4K 60p out of the rear camera and 1080p out of the front facing camera. If you aren't a pixel peeper, and if you don't know what that is and you don't operate in the camera world, stay that way. But basically what that is, is it's where you take an image, blow it up bigger than you would ever look at it in a way that you would never even do to enjoy that memory. And you try to look for flaws in the underlying image. The vast majority of people on planet Earth would never do this, and for you, this camera will be amazing and totally fine. For the rest, well, you were never gonna like this anyway. And lastly, in the things I've liked, I do like the screen. It's obviously on the older style of the iPhone design language, and it's not the edge-to-edge -edge display that you see these days, but it's a very nice, crisp retina panel that is color accurate enough. You can go up to 625 nits of brightness, and it has a 1400 to one contrast ratio. You're not gonna get HDR levels of contrast, but this display is actually really good if you can get past these bezels. I honestly don't care that much about bezels or notches, so if I can save some money and get a real quality screen, I'm going to be okay with that. When it comes to things that I haven't liked over the past year, there's really only two. One, the battery life is fine. It will get through that eight hour workday that I'm always going on about, but only just barely. After using the 12 Pro Max and the M1 Max, my personal opinion about battery life is starting to change quite drastically, so I'm not sure how much longer 
I'll give a pass to devices that only really just meet that eight hour mark. I haven't changed the standard yet. This is not me coming out changing that standard, which is why I'm not being harder here, but that day is probably coming sooner rather than later. And while I've stopped complaining about this on other Apple phones, this having the body design that it does really screams out for needing a headphone jack. If you are buying this, you probably don't want to then also spend money on AirPods or other Bluetooth type headphones and buying an extra dongle to plug in a 3.5 millimeter headphone or using those ear pods with a lightning cable no thank you. So I would like to see a more return to standard on these shape of phones to include that headphone jack, even though on the new more angular phones, we'll probably see no ports before we see expanded ports. And that's kind of a depressing thought to have. But at the end of the day, so what, right? How is the iPhone SE from last year holding up? Well, if you watch the video, I think it's holding up great. This is easily the best value phone on the market. And I think you could make a real strong argument that this is one of the best value phones ever made. You get the entire Apple ecosystem with all of this power for half the price. Other vendors and brands have started pushing harder on their budget lines of phones, and I am really specifically talking Samsung here. But even though they do all that, they don't get updated nearly as long, and you don't get access to the same overall ecosystem of other products. You just can't beat Apple with specs alone, and their recent monster sales numbers go a long way towards proving that maxim correct. If you want to beat Apple, you have to offer a competitive ecosystem or platform and you have to do it for less money but still provide a quality product. Unfortunately, this iPhone exists and I find it real hard to recommend another brand so long as this bulwark of cell phones remains. And if you like this video and you are curious about how I think Apple continues that trend of continuously winning, here's my video where I say just that and why I think the Apple ecosystem is so good at all sorts of different price brackets. You can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.